So lots going on, but we're going to start right out with our first two guests. Cheryl Lawyer is with us, and she uh, kind of uh, works with the program that uh, you're training puppies. Is that correct? And uh, she had an overnight guest last night. We heard. I did. And I was... with the sh and on the show, we have Boone, who is a puppy in training, and Mary Lynn Hansen is the trainer right now. And you're also uh, working with you're kind of the regional. Manager, manager for the uh, guiding eyes of uh, uh, for the blind. Uh, let's first of all find out about Boone. Boone is a puppy in training. He is. He's and, five months old, okay. and um, he's being raised by a family um, who is the, he's number ten. This is the tenth puppy that they've raised for guiding eyes for the blind. I must give credit for anyone who's raising these puppies because you must fall in love with oh, every do. one of them and don't want to give it up. No. Well, you do. You know yeah, it's for yeah. a good cause, yeah, especially yeah. when you see them, you're able to see them graduate or go on to whatever career they, they might decide is best suited for them. But yeah, I always say we give a box of tissues with every puppy, so <laughs> tissues are free. Okay. So, have you ever raised any? I have raised, personally, I've raised four. Okay. Um, my last two have gone on to uh, different work. They decided that they didn't want to be guide dogs. Uh, one is an explosives detection dog. Uh, he'd been up until a few weeks ago at the 9-11 memorial wow. and yeah very proud of him and my last one is currently in training for search and rescue and doing oh. extremely well so and, and we'll whatever you train them for now is will do them instead for any field that they go right. into. right well what we do as puppy raisers and we're all volunteers by the way i'm a volunteer uh, ML, as we like to call her, um, is our regional. <laughs> she's our trainer, but she's an employee of Guide Talk guys. in a minute. That's so okay. she's my boss, so to speak. <laughs> um, but uh, we, as puppy raisers, we're all volunteers, and we bring these puppies in our home when they're about eight. They're eight weeks old, and we keep them until they're uh, 16, 18 months. And we go to class twice a month. ML leads class with the basic training, and our jobs as puppy raisers is really to teach them foundation skills. The, you know, basic house manners and people manners. Well, look how well that they're doing. I mean, at five yeah. months old. I know he's. It's kind of hard. It's like having a five-year-old. You know, yeah. Sit well, still, and he's so. got a lot of energy, but he still has to learn how to behave. Right. I do want to mention. I was uh, at uh, Proctor's uh, a while back, and someone brought a dog, uh, a you know, a vision dog or maybe a therapy dog. I'm mm -hmm. not sure what. But the dog was very well behaved, got right under the seat and stayed there for the entire show without, I mean, I, I don't think he took him out, but he was really good. Yeah, well, we start that very early age, learning how to they settle. They get tired, too. Yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> Believe me, they have, they know they're working dogs. If they didn't like the work and the mental challenge and the physical challenge, they wouldn't do it. Um, and that's where other careers are available to them at some point, maybe down the road. But our jobs is to teach them patience, good manners, being able to do this. Trust me, when they're not working, when they're not practicing their skills, they're dogs. And the same is true of service dogs for the blind. Mm -hmm. They dig and they swim and they fetch and they do all kinds of dog things. But when they're working or they're they know on they're the working. Job, I mean, when yeah. they get their jacket on, they know that they, they're working. And, and Boone is learning that. He's had his jacket now for a few weeks, so he he just learns that. Um, and also, ML is sending signals to him by her behavior that I have a certain expectations of you right now. Okay, um, yeah. ML, yeah. you've been quiet over there. <laughs> We're going to find out what um, what is the process for all of this. We we know what kind of it entails. But if someone wanted to be um, a, a, a guiding eye, train a dog, and what do you do with the dogs afterwards? Okay. Um, if somebody wants, if somebody's interested in raising a puppy for guiding eyes, they would get in contact with guiding eyes at the website, and they would be directed to the region that would be associated with where they live. So this show goes out to to actually the entire universe because you can see it on the web. Right, and we have we have dogs that run all the way up from North Carolina. We've got some out in Colorado, all the way up to Maine, out to Ohio, up the northeastern seaboard. Um, so you get. Um, hooked up with the region and somebody like Cheryl who's the regional coordinator would make the initial contact and then we would invite you to come to our puppy classes and observe and continue to get a lot of information if this is going to be the right thing for you um, and then there are it's a commitment it's a big commitment and um, we have pre-placement classes which teach you 
all of the things that you'll be doing with a puppy and to see if your expectations and ours match so that you can be successful and that the dog can be successful. That's, that's the biggest thing. Everybody says to me, I've been training dogs for about 15 years, and they go, oh, it must be wor you know, great working with the dogs. It's like, yeah, the dogs is great. It's people. You're, you're training people to train yeah. dogs. Exactly, and yeah. that's, that's more complex because they have their own ideas of what they think. Right, and frequently the dog's um, developmental skills are progressing faster than the person's ability to learn what they need to do. Oh. So that always makes it challenging and exciting, and I'm always learning something new. Now, if us, uh, how, okay, how do you place the dogs? Because, I mean, once you, you train them, I mean, is there a waiting list? Do, do you have to buy the dog? What happens? The process goes, um, after we're done as a puppy raiser at 16 to 18 months, Along the way, they're evaluated. That's one of the things that ML does when she comes to classes. She's watching for skills and how to support and develop that dog and what, what you know, how he's progressing. Then there's an infra training test, like entrance exam to college, we mm -hmm. call it, and um, and then the dogs go on to formal training, which could be six to eight months, average, could be longer, mm -hmm. could be shorter, but at that during that process, that's when they're really going to formal guide dog training or they're evaluated for other careers. I see, um, I see. And then after the training, uh, if all goes well, um, then they're matched with a blind person who um, has made an application, has gone through this process, and um, it's, the dog is provided free of charge. They put a $50,000 price tag well, on each one of these puppies. Well, it has to be the amount of training and, and everything so, that goes into Guiding it. Guiding Eyes does a lot of uh, fundraising and, of mm -hmm. course, generous donors that help make that happen. And then there's a graduation when the person is matched with a the puppy. They match personalities, believe it or not. Dogs yeah. have well, personalities. Yeah, they have to, yep. sure. There's a big celebration, and we get to go and see our dog all grown up and meet the new person. And it's very, I get always a little choked up when I talk about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if you're interested in the program, you can certainly go to their website and, and to learn a little bit more about it. And uh, just, and I think we probably covered everything here. <laughs> and Boone has been a, a perfect gentleman here. He's like, oh, I, you me? To me? Yeah, right. <laughs> You're talking to me? And uh, while I just have a moment, I would like Cheryl to just mention the uh, NABA Low Vision. Oh, thank yeah. you very much. Um, yes, tomorrow is our big annual uh, Low Vision Technology Fair um, at St. Sophia's uh, Greek Orthodox Church. It's an opportunity for folks to come and see all the latest in, in uh, technologies to help with primarily reading, reading machines, uh, computer software, um, text-to-speech applications, video magnifiers, all things that can help people who are blind or visually so impaired. So if you don't have a dog, you know, which not everybody's going to have a dog, but if you have low vision, you don't need a dog. So therefore, here's a great program to go see and check it out. Yeah, thank, thank you, you both for Thanks being for the here. Problem. And, and, and you have a beautiful dog that you're taking care of here, right? <laughs> this is great. This is, yeah. this is my job Yeah, you've easy. been a great dog. <laughs>